Só que o WhatsApp também, não sei, não está fazendo uma coisa aqui. Manda para mim, e aí eu mando a mensagem de novo. Acho que é melhor colocar só o link do... Ah, só o link do YouTube, né? Do então, só dá copiar, o... você consegue copiar o link. Só dá uma resposta, por favor, a seguirmos o link do YouTube assim. Acho que vai ser mais fácil. Não, eu acho que não tem muito Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? Já tá? tá? Já 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 tá? Hello everyone, good morning. Sorry, a few minutes delayed. We're having some technical difficulties with our streaming software. So today we are trying our Zoom, trying to do our Zoom uh, um, software to, to go live. So hopefully it will work. Uh, hello, good morning. So we'll read our, as our harmonization text from Living Spring, text 56, be born again now. I'll tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Jesus, Jonathan, chapter three, versicle three. Nature, John, not Jonathan, sorry. Nature holds valuable lessons in this respect. Years pass with mathematical precision. Nevertheless, each day is a new day. Since people have 365 opportunities per year to learn and to start again, how many opportunities for moral renewal will there be in the blessed period of an entire lifetime? Keep what is good and just, beautiful and worthy from the past, but do not hold on to the darkness and the retreats, even when they are disguised in enchanting clothing. In your endeavors of true fraternity, do your own share. Do not shoulder your spirit, spirit benefactors and friends with it. Each new hour may bring readjustment. If possible, do not put off till later the ties of peace and love you can create now by replacing the heavy shackles of disaffection. It is not easy to break our old preconceptions about the world or open our hearts and forgive those who have hurt us. Nonetheless, the best antidote against the poison of aversion is our goodwill towards those that hate or misunderstand us. While we are pulled up in our defensive fortress, our adversary thinks of ways to come up with more ammunition against us. However, 
if we face the situation fiercely and calmly, showing a new attitude in the conflict, the idea of peace replaces the dark fermentation of war inside and around us. Has someone offended you? Exercise understanding once more. Has someone misunderstood you? Persevere in demonstrating the best intentions. Revitalize yourself each day in the crystal clear and incessant stream of the good. Do not forget the master's words. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Be born again right now regarding your objectives, resolutions, and attitudes. Working to overcome the obstacles around you and anticipating the victory over yourself in due time. It is better to help today than to be helped tomorrow. All right. Let's raise our thoughts. Let's find that inner place inside each one of us where we can find peace, where we can find calmness, where we can connect with our Father God and our Jesus, our Master. Let's first be grateful for one more opportunity that we have, that we are here and that we have to learn a little bit more about Jesus' gospel in light of this consoling doctrine, which is the Spiritism. Let's be thankful for this second home of love, which is FSS. And let's, let's ask our guardian angels, the spiritual team from FSS, to enlighten one more Sunday morning. Let us have a serene, fruitful, with reflections, with information and knowledge that can help us in our spiritual journey, in our spiritual journey of moral evolution. So be it. All right. So today we're going to talk about self-encounter or encounter with our self. Or we can also translate in encounter with the self, which all meaning is having a coffee chat or a chat is just with us, with each one of us. And how, how have we been doing that? Have we been uh, using our strength, our time to make that time for ourselves and see and have that talk and have some of those reflections and see how are we doing? How are we doing this uh, journey that we are all here on earth? And in order to give a little bit of more information and understanding, I'm going to, I base uh, into uh, three, two, one text and two uh, talks. One from a uh, uh, talk called Encounter with the Self and the Ex Existential Meaning from Carl Jusinot from Spirit Years of Play. Uh, the second, that's a beautiful text that I strongly recommend everyone to take a quick peek, read, because as we can imagine, Joanna de Angelis, with all of her uh, knowledge, is very straightforward and very, uh, she's like a teacher with um, exactly why should we <laughs> meet, have, meet with ourselves, how, and some of the challenges that we will face when having that chat with ourselves, and what are the results. So she's kind of brilliant in highlighting that structure in that text. And that's how I would uh, kind of show some of the parts of that text uh, to, to, to all of us. And also, uh, Encounter with the Self by Hosandu Hosandu Kundi. So uh, my objective in the next while is to understand this the importance of promoting this encounter of ourselves but what does it for what is it for is so we can have a better success or have a better chance of success in everyone's journey to pursue happiness but what does that mean 
who am I invited to encounter? So at the surface level, I'm invited to encounter with Luis, the person that I am right now. That's a very fair and right answer. But if we go a little bit deeper, who is Luis? What is Luis comprised of? Luis is just this uh, body that is uh, incarnated right now. No, Luis is more than that, right? All of us, we, uh, if we take the divine laws and we see the law of reincarnation, I am a reincarnate, uh, reincarnated immortal spirit. So if I take that law and if I understand that I am incarnated and I had other lives, when I'm encountered, am I encountered just with Luis? No. I'm encountered with the immortal spirit of Luis that has had several other experiences. Why is that important? Because with other, all the other experiences that I have had and each one of us have had, I will encounter with some different habits. I will encounter with some uh, thought patterns that I have been using for quite a while. And I will encounter only with Luis as the one that uh, incarnated now and has had other lives. No, I will encounter with Luis and Luis, the Luis and the, each one of us that have, has, has had, that's a lot of has had, <laughs> uh, a lot of experiences when growing up, right? The experiences that I have, uh, I have had uh, when I was a child, when I interacted with my family, with society, with friends. So at a surface level, when you just say, yeah, I'm just going to meet with Luis, but there is way more. There's way more information and way more um, things that we will uh, encounter when we uh, decided to, to uh, have that coffee chat uh, with, with myself. And why, also why that is important, because when, I, when all of us, if we look at our past, we might have faced some challenges, some uh, folks and uh, can be family, friends from, uh, and they might have um, done, or I went through a series of situations and those situations, it depends on how I decided to interpret whatever has happened to me. If someone maybe uh, yesterday or in my past was maybe me, or I was uh, impacted by some other reactions, it will all depend how we and each one of us internalize that action that I received. So Claudio uh, Sinotti, when he was talking about this importance of meeting with ourselves and when we put in perspective at all the journey of our life here and also in our past is it's very important that we, that we are aware of how I interpreted every single fact that happened in my life. Because he mentions there is, I'm gonna have to read the name of Jean-Paul Sartre, which he, who is a, a, a French philosopher that says, what is important is not what happens to us, but how we respond to what happens to us. When I saw that post, like that's kind of simple put, that's kind of brilliant, right? Because yeah, it's not it, that easy, right? It, uh, <laughs> yes, but it takes a lot of some of our effort yeah, of just to, uh, when something happened, as imperfect as we are, sometimes our instincts are way faster and we kind of, oh, I don't care about this quote. <laughs> I need to react the way that I want to react uh, uh, right now. So 
But once I read that sometimes, when I can, not always, it's important that I take that into my perspective and kind of remember, okay, I cannot control whatever happens externally, but I can control how I, how I welcome that event into my life. And when I was reading that quote and kind of as I have that chat with myself, most likely myself will tell some stories and some situations and how myself interpreted that situation. And it's important for me to interpretalize that and kind of put that into perspective and think about it. Because maybe the way that I interpreted something in the past, that might be causing some uh, roadblocks or might be uh, not being, not producing the benefits that I wish uh, or that I would like to have in my life. And I remember, I think it was three or four years ago, when Alberto de Almeida came here to Calgary and he was talking about uh, our inner child, right? And he always talks about all the experience that we have. It's like that we are dealing with a lot of inner childs that we have in, uh, within us. And some of those childs, depending on how that child interpreted or how that child reacted to a situation, that child might feel a little bit hurt, right? And it's important. And that child's requiring some of our attention. Is that only attention? No, it's requiring a little bit of our love. So we can hear. It's like Louise hearing, listening to Louise's maybe hurtful child that is there just wanting to talk about what happened and trying to make sense uh, of all that situation that happened in the past. So in just maybe, it was about five minutes, there's a lot that happens when we have that encounter with ourselves, and how important it is that we spare some time and dedicate some time uh, for us to have that conversation, for us to kind of share the love, that the self-love that each one of us have inside of us to give to that hurt child that might be needing a little bit of that uh, attention. But we'll talk more about what Joanna says about self-encounter and a little bit more of how is that important to us. But I would like to bring another example from Claudio where he, even though it's a little bit dark, uh, when he's talking about um, self-encounter and sparing that time to talk with us, it's like we're searching for our own treasure. So imagine that we have a treasure in our hands. Somehow that treasure is robbed, stole from us. What is the reaction that we have? If we have a beautiful treasure and it has been stolen, how do you react? Angry. Angry? Yeah. Sad. Mad. Mm -hmm. And then we decide who stole that? Who was it? And then we found that it was ourselves. <laughs> it's us that, that kind of put that and even though he said we stole it, this is my interpretation, my personal opinion. Maybe it stole might not be the best, but we decided to hide it. And then we forgot it. Where did we put it? And then we find out that the only person that is able to find that key or find it again is ourselves again. So similar to, I think when I had the, uh, the, the talk that we first opened, it's all within us. <laughs> it's all us that require, that uh, we are invited to take that action, the, the actions to <coughs> find that treasure uh, again. And sometimes when I saw about treasure, and that's one of the reasons that I like that analogy, because treasure in our, uh, that, in our world that we are living in right now have a, sometimes can be misunderstood with what? 
Sometimes, yes. And money is material things, right? Sometimes we just look at over the fence and we look externally, I need that treasure there. Ah, is that maybe it's a money, maybe it's uh, <coughs> some uh, house or whatever. Yeah, everything. Uh, everything, everything that only the world that we are living in right now wants to offer. And then we, said, we thought, okay, I got it. And then said, oh, that's not enough. Yeah. I need a little bit more. I got it. Oh, that's not enough. I need a little bit more. And then we only emphasize the exterior, exterior search of that treasure. Am I saying that we just need to disregard and not think about that material piece? No. And even the gospel according to spiritism has a whole chapter that talks about there is a purpose for the material uh, aspects. Because without that material aspects, aspects or benefits, how earth is going to evolve? how earth is going to develop. So I'm not saying that we should disregard, but we should just find a balance. We just need to put that piece into the right spot, in the right place. And we, what we are invited is, what, can, what do I have to do to find the treasures that I will carry beyond what, what I'm living right now? The treasures that are part of my immortal spirit, not to disregard, but put in balance, in perspective, into the right place. In addition to that, most of you might know that I'm very passionate by the parable of talents, right? I love that parable because I think it's a brilliant way uh, of um, showing that every one of us have our own skills, talents and everything that is required for us to succeed in our, uh, in our journey here. And that treasure has a parallel for me with those talents. And if you remember that parable, one servant has five talents, another one has two talents, and another one has one talent. What happens is the five and the two, they did what they could, and they're able to multiply. However, what I like is the Lord which is uh, God never said that for you that has five, give me 10. For you that has two, give me four. Or for you that has one, give me two or give me three or give me four. The Lord has never said anything about the goal because he knew that the goal is individually to each one of us. But what happened to that servant that had just one talent? He was too afraid. He's like, oh, I'm not going to do anything with this because I might risk lose and, has, and have nothing to return to the Lord. And he decided to hide and did not do anything with that talent. So that's another piece of treasure that we are all invited to pay attention. And are we hiding some of those talents that we have or those treasure? That's why I like instead of steal, stealing, hiding. Are we not taking or doing the best that we can with the talents that we have. And if we have a talent, God, if we assume that God is perfection, would God make a mistake and say, no, 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 actually I gave you the wrong talent. Now he's gonna waste his entire life on earth. It doesn't, can we just in Portuguese? No order. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense for us. Even when we talk that out, it doesn't make sense, right? So another call here for us to, Think about that treasure. Are we looking to the right place internally about that treasure? Are we hiding and forgetting about it and not make the best use of that treasure? We are. Are we afraid? Are we afraid? I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that talent's good. I'm just stay quiet here yeah. and just see the life just passing by. Exactly. Can you do that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's again, nice. law, free will. We all can make that, that choice, right? However, there will be some, uh, some of the consequences, right? Not punishment, but just consequences of a missed opportunity, like any missed opportunity that we might have in our, uh, in our life. And then a reflection. What parts of me? What are my treasures that I need to find? 
that's not for anyone to answer, but just to reflect. Look at it within ourselves, maybe have a two minute, two, minute, two minutes coffee chat with yourself and okay, what am I hiding here? Or what do I need to find uh, that is missing or uh, can benefit this uh, incarnation that I'm in? And then I wanna go to that, that text, which I kind of prefaced already that Joanna mentioned and how she brilliantly, uh, and maybe I was, I'm being too logical, but I sometimes I like to be logical and that's uh, in those texts because he really divided that text into why should we care? How do we do it? And what do we get out of it? Simple as that. So I wanna walk you through what uh, she mentions about why. Why should we care about encountering ourselves? And she said, the anxious search for affirmation of personality often leads the individual to prioritize efforts in favor of external conquests, which leave him or her frustrated, usually dissatisfied. It then moves from one need to another, which becomes a priority goal. And when it's achieved, a new lack of interest dominates it, leaving it stunned. Again, that's one of, uh, I'm not a psychologist, but re reading all uh, Joanna D'Angelo's uh, materials and even the spirit, uh, the spirit of the doctrine, that's one of the reasons that sometimes we feel that anxiety, right? Because we put a lot of uh, importance in that external environment. Can we control the external environment? No, we can only control my internal environment. And with everything that the world has to offer to us, sometimes we kind of misunderstood and we lose a little bit of our balance and we lose a little bit of the address of ourselves and we just keep looking externally. And because we cannot control the external environment, but I want to control the external environment, that is what she's mentioning about this anxiety to look for some of that affirmation and look of what the world is telling us, what they want us to see, feel, and look like that we forgot that is within us, that is our, um, uh, that's our journey to, to find what is that I want to be. What is that? I, what I want to progress as I am in this um, in this um, in this world that we are uh, living right now. And if we couple that with oh, external is what happiness is, then we fall into that dangerous trap of losing the control and the power to pursue my own happiness, leaving to the outside world to do that. Please, if I can um, comment something or yep. add something to your uh, explanation. I guess this comes right to the, the beginning when mm -hmm. you said that what do we do with things that happen to us? To, yeah. So it's how we understand what's the, what's the intention of the anxiety. Mm -hmm. So we are feeling anxious, why? What's the good intention? Why? What is the reason? Mm -hmm. The deep reason is always try to control, to control, to be alert of something that will happen in our lives. Yeah. But we cannot control that. Mm -hmm. So how do I? What? Well, how do I cope with this situation? How do I react feeling? to things that are happening externally as well? Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just would like to add this comment. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And she continues. His repeated effort of transferring needs ends up exhausting him. And I think I, I can be vulnerable and, and say that. So I've been struggling with anxiety and really sometimes you, I feel like it's physically painful when we are in this constant uh, need or in this constant movement of trying to control. And it's when I read that, when I read the word exhausting, 
that really is like, yeah, that's that's what is that what really happens. Hurting his or her interests that are left out. Indeed, the physical existence is, is existence is a timely opportunity for the acquisition of values that contribute to peace and the realization of the intelligent being. This, however, will only be possible when the center of interest does not deviate from the central theme, which is evolution. So she makes it very clear that the center of our interest, she's recommending us that the center of our interest in this physical existence right now is should not steer away from evolution, but evolution of whom? What is this evolution that she's talking about here? Is the evolution of Louise? Yes, but Louise as an immortal spirit. That is the evolution that we should uh, always be conscious and be mindful and remind that. It's like when there is, when I'm trying or I'm deciding how I'm going to react to something that is happening externally, it's like I'm having a future. Uh, yeah, it's a filtering that feeling or kind of assessing that feeling. Is this good for my moral evolution? A question simple as that, of course, in the heat of something that might not be possible, but maybe after that something happens, maybe I lost my temper or I did something that I didn't want to, but that's okay. Can we then reassess that movement or that reaction? And oh, is that good for my moral evolution? That's okay if we did it wrong. There's no problem. But as long as we reassess. And sometimes as we keep doing that, sometimes we, were, we will be in the midst as we're going through I might be losing my temper, and then I say, oops, that not, it's not good for my evolution. And I can just don't, maybe avoid that. And as we go a little bit further, before entering or before going through a challenge, I can be mindful already. It's like, oh, I might face some challenges here that my, I might lose my temper or I might do something that's not good for my evolution. Let me be mindful of that right now. But that comes with time. That comes with experience. And we will have as many opportunities as required for us to develop that. In order to be achieved, it is essential to evaluate our ideas and concepts in order to know what is really transitory and what is of long course and duration. The lengthy reflection will separate the real goals of the apparent ones, giving rise to the choice of those which have the answers and the fulfillment resources. So when I read those two sentences here, there is a virtual for me that is kind of blinking and it's like, please use that virtual, please use that virtual. Do you, which virtual do you think that is? When we are separating, when is what is essential? How do you make a decision of what is essential and what is not essential? What is fulfilling me and what is not fulfilling me? There is a virtual that helps us to do that. What is what do you think? With the D. Start with the D. <laughs> and it's D in Portuguese and in English. <laughs> yeah. Discernment. Discernment. Exactly, a very important virtue that puts us in check. And as she's mentioning here, discernment is when I ask that question, is this good? Is this good for me? Is this good for my beloved ones, my family, society? But most important, it's something gotta start here. Is that good for my own development? So that discernment, I think discernment and patience are two virtues, virtues 
that is kind of every single day we are being kind of invited. Use it, use it, mean it, use it. It's kind of by minute <laughs> that there is an opportunity for us to practice that. And one uh, piece that I, it caught my attention is this lengthy reflection. Is she saying, oh yeah, it's just give, give, give it a night. You're gonna figure all this out. No. Sleep over it. <laughs> Sometimes the sleepover will be just the beginning of that process. <laughs> but it is a lengthy reflection. It is. It requires us time, investment of our efforts to make that and to um, dedicate it to make those lengthy reflections. So we can separate, okay, this is good. This is maybe not good, cannot stay away from that right now, but I know it's there, I'm gonna take care. So this I can do right now. It's kind of some prioritization in our lives. It's spiritual prioritization, does that? Yeah. I don't know, oh my God, I, like I just invented something. <laughs> 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 well, I'm totally wrong. Uh, but it is, it is an important piece, important process to think about that. And she, she kind of towards to the end of the why she says, today, today, more than ever, this is an urgent decision for obvious reasons, since while individuals and collective balance, health and happiness are lacking, the setbacks and anxieties are multiplying, reaping the ideas of human ennoblement. I think this text was written back in the day, maybe the 50s or the 60s. And I think that today, more than ever. More than ever. <laughs> and still more than ever today, even though it was written, I don't know how long ago. More yeah. than ever. And today, right not now. now and not tomorrow. And if you if we read that tomorrow, we're gonna read today. If we read next week, we're gonna read today. That call, it's always there. And with the world that we are living and we have been living, that's another call for us to focus on that human ennoblement and dedicate it our time to do that. And to put the cherry on the top, she, with the end of the why, she says, in fact, if in fact you are striving for happiness, try encountering with yourself. Who here is not striving for happiness? Who in the world is not striving for happiness? And I like the way that she says, you shall, and I like the shall in English, you shall do something. She didn't say that. She says, try. Try encounter. If we know Joanna, I would take her. I'm taking <laughs> a recommendation, not every day, uh, but every time that I think there is an opportunity, I kind of use that recommendation to spare some time and, and talk. Because if we connect this to what Jesus says, the God's kingdom is within us, right? If God's kingdom is within us, I need to search not in my life, my kids, or in society, the invitation is to search that kingdom within us. One way of searching that kingdom within us is talking to myself, analyzing, not judging, but assessing, trying to figure out what is happening. It's kind of a, a doctor doing a diagnosis. If we don't diagnose whatever we're having with the human body, that disease might progress to a stage that we don't want. So the longer that we wait, that thing might keep growing and growing and growing. Then it's a little bit harder for us to uh, diagnose. It's like more, it's a little bit more overwhelming for us to diagnose. And it might take more and more of our effort to start finding uh, the solutions instead of saying just the cure of what we're facing. And this is very important, not judge. Yes. Because normally we, we kind of have this activism to judge ourselves very, very quickly. 
Yes. And uh, or we we can go to another extremity, extremity which is um, don't do anything. Find excuses why we're not doing what we should do. Yeah. So uh, when and the fact um, the middle side, the middle path is the best way for us. Yeah. And it's it takes time for us to understand what is the balance because we normally we are from one side to another, kind of floating from yeah. one side to another, and that's that's the, the the center is where we can find ourselves, we can hear ourselves, and we can understand ourselves because always there is this child that is hurt there yeah. that is uh, lots of uh, beliefs that we were taught since they were a child and we grew up with that so not only when we're a child but other incarnations yes we kept it there is a mental trace here in our minds that's all the habits that we built not only since we were born but also with other life experience that we had important is embrace yeah like understand ourselves and look at that sonia if like if i had paid you to give me that segue that's how joanna describes this process and she says this is how some of the uh the hows how do i do that using prolonged meditation you will immerse within yourself discovering your real immortal being which awaits the opportunity for unfolding and realization. Certainly, the first attempts will not give you appreciable results. <laughs> That's exactly what you said. When we decide, say, I'm going to go on that journey, the first stop of that journey is like, oh, I better go back down. Let's, let's unpack back here. <laughs> let's. So she knows that we will face some of those challenges but again compassion no judgment love those are all fundamental mindsets that we are invited to take otherwise it will be too scary it will be too overwhelming for every time that we find something that we don't like for us to be just too afraid and frightened and just give up and she's saying that we will, as we progress, the first attempts might be a little bit challenged, but we will get better and better. And one explanation is saying why, but why the first attempts will not be give me good results. And I like the way that Sandro explains, because sometimes we, when I said, okay, I'm going to encounter with Luis, but I'm pretty sure that Louise is already perfect. Gold. There's nothing else that might be or might need to be uh, changed there. So I idealize. <gasps> I put myself in that pedestal and, oh, that's all good. And then as I discover, there is that frustration. It's like, darn it. I thought you had that all figured it out. <laughs> but... I didn't. And then that frustration sometimes can generate fear. And then I decided not to do that anymore. Guilty. So that's, sorry? Guilty. Yeah. And sometimes that, that guilty uh, feeling, right? Another thing that happens, and maybe you guys are sick and tired of me talking about is maybe I don't idealize Louise, but I idealize someone else, some of my neighbors. It's like, ha, that's exactly where I want to be. And then when I diagnose, when I go to diagnose myself in that area, I look at it, it's like, ah, that's not how I am. That's, that's sad. Okay, that's too hard. I'm not going to do that. So it's important for us to be mindful of that and somehow be prepared. And what are the tools that we have? Every one of us. We don't need to purchase anything. It's all those virtuals. How do I be compassionate with myself? How do I not judge with myself? How do I uh, exercise, exercise self-love? And one, what is one great example, at least what I know so far, of who gave 
that chance to herself to kind of go into that encounter, even though she encountered with Jesus, she was encountered with uh, herself. And even though she had everything at that time, but she still, she was thirsty of, with, the, the, with the life. She couldn't, she had everything, but she didn't have anything. Who do you think I'm talking about? You know, <laughs> it's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, she, she had everything. She had a great life, all the power, all the material things that she wanted, even beauty, she had it. But still, she was missing kind of her essential being. And even though she was like, ah, I've heard about Jesus. And Jesus, like, I won't be able to, to tell all the story, but Jesus was going and uh, to a, a, a place that she was nearby. And even though she was like, ah, I think there's, there's nothing, but I will still give myself a chance to go and encounter with Jesus. And she did. And once she did it, she kind of, she was able to find her, to find what was her purpose in her life. She found, and Jesus, as we know, as the master that he, he was, he didn't judge. And he gave, and not he gave, he helped her uncover and give her and that strength and power to find the areas that she wanted to improve in herself and find the life she was looking for herself. If you want to know more about it, there's a beautiful lecture uh, for ATOR from ATOR. Uh, it's from the Seeds of Light uh, Center in Edmonton. And he brilliantly talks about Mary Magdalene and her example, which is, it's, uh, it's a mercy. It's a beautiful, beautiful lecture that he gave and talks about her example, even though she had everything and she gave herself that chance to look for something beyond of what she had. Still in the process, you will realize the fixation of the mind in the interiorization will be interrupted numerous times by the usual distractions of the intellect and the lack of harmony. Not used to immersion, your attempt will be hampered by the interruption of ideas filled in the unconscious, determinants of your restless, irregular, conflicting conduct. Who we'll tried here to meditate sometimes and, oh my God, I have to pay that bill, I have to go to grocery store, or I have to do this, or I have that issue, or I have that thing. And it's, it's part of that exercise. And nowadays, with all the technology and everything that we have in this world, that distraction is even, even more, uh, more intense uh, for us. Not only the, the ideas or interruptions of the things that happen in the world, the world, but also our mental connection to the spiritual world. I like the way that Emmanuel says, we are in the market of ideas. It's up to us to decide which ideas I'm going to tune in. There will be ideas that are not so very good. It will be up to me to tune in on that idea or tune out on that idea. And those ideas are 24 seven. They're in the market for us to decide what do we need to do uh, with that. We agree that the creature is driven for the most part by the unconscious, which dictates its thoughts and actions as a normal result of the previous mental construction themselves. That's our habits. We have solidified habits and patterns that we follow because it's easy, it's there. The change of habit requires new conditions in order to plunge into this tumultuous ocean. I like this analogy. Yes, when I'm encountering myself, it's like an ocean filled with waves and an agitated ocean that sometimes really takes my balance and really shape me, reaching the limit that grants access to the beaches of harmony. 
we all all of us have that sacred pace, place inside us inside of us that we can find that have harmony and then she mentions self-discovery inner fulfillment so self-discovery is that part in our self-encounter when we decided to encounter with ourselves we kick in we start that self-discovery uh, process is that only juana that's talking about the self-discovery if we're talking about self-encounter and self-discovery, I could not uh, bring question 919. Kardec asked the spirits, what is the most effective means for improving ourselves in this life and for resisting the draw of evil? And the spirit says, Santo Agostinho says, know thyself. But know thyself at a surface. It seems like, yeah, just know yourself. But there is more, right? There's more to it. Why, what, I'm, what do I need to know about myself, right? Sometimes we, when we're studying or when we're uh, in, in spiritism, we just say, yeah, just go and do good. Or just go and do, practice charity. But why am I practicing charity? Or even just pray. But if we don't investigate, why am I praying? What do I, what am I praying for? What do I need in order to have a prayer that is effective for me? Why am I practicing charity? Am I practicing charity just for my egoistic feelings? What does charity mean? So know thyself goes beyond of what we're, we just go and do it because the books are saying for us to do. No, it's understanding why I'm doing that, what this, what this, the books are saying, and what does that mean for, for me, just for myself. And I also establish kind of a parallel when I'm here talking. Because if I'm here, this caught my attention, and I'm just here sharing. And hopefully, we can exchange as we exchange some of the ideas, and I can continue in my journey of trying to improve uh, myself. I like this quote uh, from Carl Jung. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious, right? And he says, this is kind of the, this is for me is the law of progress and work, right? It's my, it's up to me because the shadow, why a shadow exists is just because there is a, a obstacle in front of it the light comes and then there's a shadow. If I remove that obstacle, then I just shine light and that shadow disappears. So this, that, this is just, it's the same thing that happens, happens in our internal world. We just are invited to shine that light. And towards the end, in this feat, you see the fall of many empty ambitions which you cultivate through ignorance or not proper education. The collapse of countless deceptions, the disappearance of countless conflict that stun and devastate you. You will mature slowly and calm, and calm down, not letting yourself be overwhelmed by discouragement or, exalt, or exalted by enthusiasm of others. Find the balance. Don't be, <coughs> try not to be overwhelmed, but not too cheerful. It's like, yeah, life is perfect. There's nothing wrong. That's not, that's not reality. It's finding that inner, that fine balance between uh, the, both, um, the both extremes. Yeah, I like what, what she said, that you will mature slowly. Slowly, exactly. And calm down. Yes. Yeah. It's part of um, being conscious. Yes. What is the result? So I talk about why, some of the how, but what is it all for? You'll be immune to the temptation of pride and the stone of envy, gratuitous, gratuitous incomprehension and persecuting enmity, because you only pay attention to the need to appreciate the deep and indestructible being that you are. That is, it's looking, it's a beautiful way to say 
that I have everything that everyone that I need. And God gave me everything that I required. And I am an indestructible being, an indestructible mortal spirit. Here, there is a duty and a right of happiness. And we all deserve it. But there is a duty that we should that we are invited to put that effort. You will end up with accomplishment, and that you will end up with an accomplishment, and, they will, and that will be your most admirable victory. Therefore, do not cease as soon as you begin the inner search to continue it if the difficulties and distractions of the ego are disturbing to you. And to end, I like this quote, there is an infinite desire within us that only the infinite can fulfill. And our drama, drama is that we ask finite things to fulfill this infinite desire. Yeah, from Jim is the loop. That's it. Thank Maybe you. things will never yes. be able to fulfill our infinite desires. desires. Yeah. I think it was very well, well put by this philosopher. Awesome. Hope. Let me just check if there's any questions. Okay. No. All right. One, one minute. Let's do our final final prayer. So let's continue connected to God, connected to Jesus, our master. And again, one more time, and always be grateful. Be grateful for this opportunity that we had to learn a little bit more about what is, how it's important for us to dedicate time to have that meeting, to encounter with ourselves. And even though there might be, and there will be some challenges, the divine mercy, the divine knowledge of God has provided us with all the single tools and everything that is required for us to succeed. And as a result, that we can accomplish that we can enjoy what is possible in this world in relation to happiness. Let us reflect, let us think about and put in perspective how much time are we dedicated to encounter and do this diagnosis with ourselves. Let us remind that even though there might be a little bit of frustration and fear, let us have faith. Let us have confidence that in God and Jesus, we will be able to thrive and we will be able to be successful in this journey. Let us ask for one more blessed Sunday, one more blessed week full of love, peace, and serenity. So beautiful.